Good morning. The music industry is at the beginning of what I believe may be a transforming revolution. <clears throat> the buying habits of music lovers are changing. Rather than buying physical records or even digital downloads, consumers are starting to prefer buying music on demand from streaming services. For example, the success of Spotify in Sweden may set the stage for where our own industry is heading. Spotify in Sweden sells 60% of the country's music, streaming it to multiple devices such as smartphones, computer tablets, etc. Music streaming services typically charge a recurring subscription fee of $10 per month, a more predictable model with no manufacturing obsolescence or returns. In Sweden, Revenues are back to where they were 10 years ago. Combining this with growing revenue streams from internet radio and digital video platforms, I am more optimistic about the business now than at any time in the last 10 years. As the second largest global recorded music company, Sony Music identifies, develops, markets, and distributes a broad array of music and music-related content. We have operations in 44 countries, and for the fiscal year ended March 2013, we generated $4.7 billion in total revenue and $1.2 billion in global digital revenue. On a worldwide basis, our 2012 market share is 22%. We are a strong number two. In the US, the world's largest market, Sony Music ranks second with 28% market share. And in Japan, the second largest music market, Sony Music is the industry leader, industry leader with 18%. <clears throat> Our core recorded music business is composed of two key areas. First is new repertoire development. Our creative centers include Columbia, RCA, and Epic, very famous names. They identify, develop, market, and distribute music-related content all over the world from our roster of about 1,500 active artists. This includes many of the world's biggest superstars, such as Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, Pink, and Kelly Clarkson. Number two is catalog. We repackage, market, and exploit music from our substantial library of owned and distributed catalogs. Our more than six million masters include many of the greatest records of all times. Music legends such as Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, Bruce Springsteen, Billy Joel, Barbara Streisand, and on and on. As you can see from this slide, Sony Music is home to many of the most popular recording artists in the world. The breadth and depth of the artists and catalogs that we represent is absolutely massive. We hold top positions in virtually every genre and style of music. Our vision for Sony Music is to build the leading recorded music company, powered by the industry's most talented people. We must always remember that the company with the most successful music, i.e., the most hits, will own the lion's share 
of this business. To do this, we have developed multiple sources to find and develop talent. We have assembled an extremely talented team to oversee these efforts. In the slides to follow, I will spend some time highlighting our strategy. In addition to our creative strategy, we are also pursuing a number of other key initiatives. We are diversifying beyond recorded music and growing our revenues through new businesses such as branding, merchandising, touring, and creating visual content for numerous platforms. We continue to be extremely focused on maximizing cost efficiencies throughout all areas. We are aligning ourselves with our sister Sony companies and maximizing our one Sony business opportunities. We are moving aggressively to grow our business by embracing new digital models that take advantage of the tremendous opportunities in digital distribution and by being a leader in supporting digital business innovation. Last but not least, we are positioning the company to take advantage of the enormous global demand for music. As I mentioned, our number one strategy is to gain profitable market share. Having hit music is critical to our success and essential for our ability to grow profits. We achieve this by aggressively signing new artists and buying the being the absolute best in new talent development. Central to our strategy of being the market leader, we need to have strong vision and leadership to assemble the ingredients required to create a hit. This includes identifying the right song, matching it with the right artist, the right producer, and the right marketing plan. As you can see from this slide, we develop talent across a number of different channels. Our core labels are home to many of the industry's most accomplished and successful artists. We also develop talent through a number of important partnerships with further broaden our artist reach. In addition, we participate in the thriving independent music sector through Red Distribution and The Orchard, which provide a range of services to independent artists and labels. Having strong, diversified, creative centers is absolutely vital to our continued success. Since joining Sony Music two and one half years ago, growing and invigorating these centers has absolutely been my key focus. If you don't get the music right, it doesn't matter how exciting a music plan you have, a marketing plan you have, or how revolutionary the distribution model is. Without a hit, you end up with a blank disc and an empty screen, period. To be successful, it's essential to have strong leaders who are connected to the culture, can see around corners, and find the next big thing. Columbia, under the leadership of Rob Stringer, was the number one ranked US label for overall album sales last year. Its recent hits include major successes from Adele, Daft Punk, and Force of the People. As a component of A&R strategy, they also continue to develop talent from TV platforms, including X Factor and the Glee franchise. RCA, under Peter Edge's leadership, has the biggest selling album of 2013 with Justin Timberlake's 2020 experience, which has sold over six million albums. Peter and his team also have major hits from Pink and our newest breakout artist, Miley Cyrus. 
Epic Records under L.A. Reed is breaking a number of promising artists, including A Great Big World, Carmen, Cher Lloyd, and Future. L.A. is a successful executive, songwriter, and producer who has overseen many of the biggest hits of the last two decades. I am confident he will rebuild Epic into a major creative force. In addition to the talent being developed through our core labels, Sony Music has a number of partnerships that serve as important sources of talent. Psycho, our partnership with Simon Cowell, is delivering many new artists from TV platforms, including One Direction, by far the biggest success story in the industry. Meanwhile, our partnership with Ultra gives us a leading position in electronic dance music. Led by Patrick Moxie, Ultra is the home to many of the top electronic dance artists, such as Above and Beyond and Benny Benassi. Other important partnerships include Kengasabi, led by the famous or infamous Dr. Luke, Vested in Culture, led by Sylvia Rohn, Louder Than Life, led by Salam Remy, 10 Music Group, the successful Swedish, Swedish independent label, and a very important one, Astronauts Wanted, our new partnership with former CEO of MTV, Judy McGrath. These partnerships leverage Sony Music's existing structure to maximize all efficiencies. The recent success of Miley Cyrus, One Direction, and Adele underscore the strength of our numerous creative centers in identifying and developing new artists. I'd now like to present a short video in which you'll hear about these hits from the executives who actually oversaw the projects. You'll first hear from he Peter Edge, who will discuss Miley's amazing year, then Simon Cowell, who will discuss the success of One Direction, and finally, Rob Stringer will talk about Adele's very, very incredible accomplishments. Following the videos, Kevin Kelleher, our CFO, will present Sony Music's market share position and artist highlights. He will also discuss our strategies related to new business, cost management, and one Sony. Dennis Cooker, president of our global business, digital business, will discuss our digital strategies. And Edgar Berger, president of International, will discuss our growth strategies across our international operations. Before I turn it over, I'd just like to add that I am particularly proud of the progress Sony Music has made in coming together as a team and creating an environment where absolutely anything is possible. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Kevin Kelleher, CFO with Sony Music Entertainment. As this slide illustrates, Sony Music continues to maintain a strong number two market share position at 22%. Also, Sony Music is the number one or number two music company in all key territories. As Doug just emphasized, our number one strategy is to gain profitable market share. Under his leadership, our A&R centers have been extremely active in signing and developing talent, and we are seeing real results. We were successful in gaining market share last year, and we expect an improved worldwide market share position again this year. In 2012, 50% of the top 10 best-selling albums globally and 60% of the top 10 best-selling albums in the US were from artists owned or distributed by Sony Music. Top-selling artists include Adele, two albums from One Direction, Pink, Mumford & Sons, Carrie Underwood, Jason Aldean. 
Adele's 21, the top selling album globally in both 2011 and 2012, has surpassed sales of 10 million units in the US alone. As you can see from this slide, Sony Music has been successful the past few years in finding and breaking new talent. In the US, Sony Music had 34% of the breakthrough platinum selling artists between 2009 and 2012, the most of any of our competitors. Similarly, in the UK, Sony Music had 36% of all platinum selling albums released by breakthrough artists over the same period. Breakthroughs from the UK and the US during this period include One Direction, which alone sold 14 million total units. Signing, developing, and breaking new artists is key to our future success, and this slide provides a small sampling of some of the artists that our repertoire centers are working on developing. This includes Leah Michelle, Tyler Farr, Hyam, Kess, Fifth Harmony. We are hopeful that you'll be hearing more about these artists in the upcoming months. Now let me talk about the current year. Sony Music is having a strong year driven by the successes of our new releases and catalog. Year-to-date bestsellers include Justin Timberlake, Daft Punk, Pink, and Miley Cyrus. We have recently released a number of new exciting albums that we expect to drive success through the critical holiday season, including new releases from Kings of Leon, Miley Cyrus, Celine Dion, a holiday release from Kelly Clarkson, as well as a second release this year from Justin Timberlake, the 2020 Experience, Volume 2 of 2. We are also looking forward to new releases from upcoming superstars, including One Direction, which is out this week, and a new studio release from Britney Spears, which will come out beginning of December. Now turning to some of our other core strategies we are pursuing. First, we continue to broaden Sony Music's revenue streams through a, a number of key initiatives. Where it relates to our artists, we want to be the center of all artist activity. This not only includes the production, marketing, and promotion and exploitation of the artist's recorded music, but also the touring, merchandising, and brand sponsorships. In addition, we are generating revenue streams through the development of entertainment content. Psycho Entertainment, our very successful partnership with Simon Cowell, has had great success with the X Factor and Got Talent TV formats. Sony Music participates in the revenue that these formats generate globally, and such revenue is included in the visual media platform component of the music segment. Got Talent, the world's number one TV format, is produced and broadcast in 42 countries. X Factor is produced and broadcast in 30 countries. As part of X Factor's continued expansion, the show recently launched in cooperation with Sony Music Japan in Okinawa, Japan, to very positive ratings. As Doug mentioned, uh, Psycho has been successful and a very consistent source of talent for the company. Artists developed off the X Factor and Got Talent formats include One Direction, Susan Boyle, Ollie Muirs, and James Arthur from the UK. And most recently, Richard and Adam, who placed third on Britain's Got Talent, spent four weeks at number one on the UK album chart this, this year, the most consecutive weeks of any uh, artist in that territory. Another one of our core strategies is effective cost management. During the past dozen years, we have been laser focused on reducing costs and maximizing efficiencies across all areas of our worldwide operations in response to the declining industry revenues. Following the Sony BMG merger, we consolidated, integrated, reorganized, streamlined our worldwide operations. Since then, we have continued each and every year to reduce costs by rationalizing back office functions, outsourcing non-core areas, consolidating and reducing our real estate requirements, consolidating and decommissioning IT systems and applications, and cutting back on all areas of discretionary spending. At the same time, we are continually instituting process improvements and best practices to further drive cost efficiencies. As a result of these efforts, Sony Music's overall headcount and overhead are down approximately 50% since 2004. In addition, our marketing spend has been reduced by approximately $300 million 
due to an increased focus on marketing effectiveness, as well as a shift in spending from the traditional advertising channels to the more effective online networks and platforms. Likewise, our supply chain costs have been favorably impacted as the business has transitioned from the physical formats to digital. Such costs as manufacturing, returns handling, obsolescence, warehousing, shipping are all down. Bad debts have been reduced, and in turn, profitability and margins have improved. Overall, as a result of the ongoing focus and efforts to reduce costs, Sony Music has remained profitable and cash flow positive during this dramatic transition in the music industry. Continuously aligning our cost base to reflect the realities of the marketplace remains an ongoing process and fundamental to our strategy going forward. As Doug noted, another core strategy is to maximize our one Sony opportunities with the other Sony family companies. As part of that focus, we work on a variety of initi initiatives simultaneously to enhance the marketing and distribution and monetization opportunities for Sony Music and help drive exposure and awareness and, other, and sales for the other Sony products and services. For example, we are supporting Sony's uh, sponsorship of the World Cup this year in Brazil, which you'll hear more about in a few moments from Edgar Berger. We are also partnering with Sony Pictures on music-focused films, as well as various soundtrack albums and original songs. This includes the very successful One Direction film that was released this summer uh, with Sony Pictures, and the Adele uh, Skyfall uh, song with the Bond movie last year. With Sony Electronics and Sony Mobile, we collaborate on everything from custom mobile music apps to product marketing campaigns featuring Sony music artists. And we continue to work with Sony Network Entertainment to help grow Sony Music Unlimited digital music service. We look forward to the continued collaboration with our sister companies and view this as a very important element to our strategy going forward. I'd now like to turn, it, turn you over to Dennis Cooker, who is president of Sony's digital business and sales. He's gonna walk you through some of the developments in the digital music market and talk to you about our digital strategy. Dennis. Thank you, Kevin. And good morning, everyone. We will now dive into our global digital business, looking specifically at new industry dynamics and Sony Music's strategic blueprint to be able to prepare and fully embrace the commercial value of these digital business opportunities. After more than 10 years of continuous decline, the global music market is showing some promising signs of stabilization. We believe that the industry is very close to a critical inflection point, whereby the growth in digital revenues will soon more than offset the decline in physical, restoring top-line growth to the industry. In 2012, we saw nine of the world's top 20 markets and 22 countries in total posting growth. And we are expecting overall global growth by 2015. On the physical side, we see sales continue to decline at double-digit annual rates and are 66% of what they were at the peak in 1999. We expect this phys physical decline to continue at a compound annual rate in the double digits for the next several years. Digital sales, on the other hand, were $6 billion in 2012 and continue to grow at double digit annual rates. In 2012, digital sales represented approximately 36% of total global music sales, and we expect these to surpass the 50% threshold within the next two years. We've already seen this threshold surpassed in some countries like the US, where the digital market is already at 58%. From this slide, you can see the makeup of the global digital uh, revenue base and how the composition is forecasted to change over the next four years. Currently, downloads make up almost 70% of the digital mu music business. But as this channel continues to mature, we expect single digit growth rates during the next few years, especially in the developed markets. Conversely, we expect subscriptions to become the largest component of the digital market, with annual growth rates exceeding 30%. We expect that this growth will be led by subscription services, continuing their international expansion, offering bundle deals with telcos, and developing their premium service to make their product more offering more compelling to consumers. 
Northern European countries such as Sweden, Norway, Finland, and more recently the Netherlands have seen an overall return to growth because of the take up of sub subscription services. What we're witnessing is when a market becomes predominantly subscription based, it leads to higher revenues and it makes revenue streams more predictable than what the industry has experienced historically. Online and satellite, online and satellite radio have gained critical mass to generate meaningful performance income for the recorded music industry. We expect revenues from these platforms to grow at a compound annual rate of approximately 15% during the next few years. Music video platforms are also now providing recorded music industry with a growing stream of revenues that didn't exist several years ago. Annual growth is also expected at approximately 15% for this revenue stream over the next few years. Sony Music works extensively with partners across all these different platforms at a truly global level. Moreover, our strategic investments within some of these services, including Vivo, Spotify, and Deezer, have been imperative in both their incubation and ongoing development, as well as giving us the unique insights into the evolution of the business. So, what is Sony Music doing to take advantage of the recent developments within these different music platforms? First, we, are, we start by increasing accessibility to pr premium subscription services. As observed by Northern European countries, like Sweden, when markets become predominantly streaming based, we see them return to growth. Therefore, we believe that increasing the number of paying subscribers within streaming platforms is instrumental to the growth of the digital business overall. Free ad supported tiers act as marketing tools, build service awareness, and attract music consumers who will eventually graduate into paying tiers. With this objective in mind, Sony Music continues to focus on expanding the size of the entry funnel, but while also prioritizing healthy conversion levels. We are enabling bundle deals between premium music services and carriers all over the world. And we're finding that they are a key driver to increasing both awareness and the usage of subscription services. Carriers proved to be very beneficial partners, particularly when providing marketing and billing services. As an example, we look at the bundle deal between Telia and Spotify in Sweden, which not only brought in a significant number of premium consumers, but also established Spotify as a brand name throughout the country. We are also experimenting with different free trial formats and pricing tiers, testing consumer price elasticity both in the lower spectrum and beyond the $9.99 premium. Number two, we want to maximize the consumer experience on the device. There are currently three main drivers of music growth based on device usage scenarios. Firstly is mobile, which involves both phones and tablets and is growing at an outstanding speed. We are seeing a clear transition from music being purchased and managed on the PC to purchasing, managing, and listening on the mobile phone. We also see our partners moving more towards mobile solutions, such as YouTube, currently having one billion mobile views per day 10 times what that used to be in just 2010. And Pandora having 80% of its listening on mobile compared to just 40% in 2010. Second, surprisingly, are cars, which are not typically seen as a device, but actually where a lot of music listening is happening. As an illustration, we see SiriusXM being the largest music subscription service with 25 million paying subscribers in the US alone. Thirdly, we have the home, which involves TVs, gaming consoles, and tablets. Seamless connectivity and ubiquity between different devices still remains a problem, and this is an area of constant development for both software and hardware providers. We have seen a lot of our partners active in this space, such as Vivo and Music Unlimited, offering connected music solutions for the living room through a range of devices. To address these three specific device opportunities, Sony Music is actively working with subscription partners by enabling deals and conducting detailed strategy planning sessions. Number three, we must continue to help our partners focus on customer engagement and achieve high levels of retention through the inclusion of strong visual and programming elements. Listeners today are transitioning from a behavior focused on music collection to a consumption-based music cons solutions. Visual is now a core part of music listening as you can see from the vast changes 
in the user interface of iTunes in just three years. As an extension of visual, we can also observe the immense popularity of video through pl platforms like YouTube, Vivo, and more, it, it, more recently, players like Vine and Instagram Video. Furthermore, as founding shareholders of Vivo and currently still owning a significant stake in this global video platform, we feel we are in a great position to embrace this audiovisual opportunity. Programming and curation have increased in popularity, and we see many of our largest partners focused on radio and program services. iTunes Radio, Spotify Radio, and the upcoming Beats Music service all have programming components in their product offerings. While platforms like Songza and Tunigo provide mood, activity, and genre uh, curation. We also see the increase in curation through the explosion of playlists on Spotify, and there are currently over one billion of them. Sony Music is active in this space with their own playlist application called Filter, which has over 500,000 monthly unique visitors and has proven very successful for marketing new artists. Finally, we focus on prioritizing emerging markets and prepaid solutions. We are beginning to see stabilization with, within some of the established markets where the momentum of subscription services is working against the growth in downloads and the physical market. Within emerging markets, however, where the download model is not yet established, the subscription business is mostly incremental, and some of these countries are skipping the ownership model altogether. As a result, we are seeing consumers go directly to mobile music solutions, and in some markets, like China, more people are accessing the internet through mobile than the PC. This has decreased some of the past infrastructure obstacles that were present when reaching music consumers. However, of the 5.2 billion mobile phones in the emerging markets, 4 billion of them are prepaid. Currently, most music services are primarily focused on the postpaid billing consumers, making them unable to fully embrace this opportunity. We observe this clearly when we look at our download business in Mexico, where we currently have a strong base of prepaid cards. The result is that Mexico has the highest iTunes revenue in all of Latin America. That is three times the iTunes revenue in Brazil, which is the largest music market in the region. In Latin America, we see just one example of the revenue opportunity when partners implement prepaid solutions to align with consumer behavior. Sony Music is actively working with partners to drive prepaid solutions into the emerging markets in order to unlock the opportunity for significant revenue growth for the music industry. Our digital initiatives really incorporate a global strategy. And I will now invite Edgar Berger, President and CEO of Sony Music International, to explain his strategy to grow the international business of Sony Music. Thank you, Dennis. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. As Doug noted earlier, Sony Music's international operations are a key driver of the company's growth. Our mission is twofold. We identify and develop local talent and global exportation, and we distribute them globally. Sony Music superstars should be global superstars in the world. In 2012, Sony Music International grew market share by 1% through aggressive artist development. Examples include Pitbull, who started in Miami, and One Direction from the UK. As we know, both went global in a big way. So too did Daft Punk. They went to number one in more than 30 countries. And as we speak, Miley Cyrus is becoming a global phenomenon too. We've also been able to attract 80 gold and platinum artists from competitors, including Mario Biondi from Italy, BDI from the UK, Christian Castro in Latin, May Day in Taiwan, Alanis Morissette in Germany, and Les Innocents in France. February of this year, Sony Music International acquired 50% of the Now compilation in Europe. We expect that our market share will grow again this year. And we also expect that international revenue will grow 
For the first time in many years, and our profits will reach the highest level in at least six years. Overall, Sony Music International is a strong number two worldwide and a number one in many individual countries. Our success owes much to the fact that we follow the adage, think global, act local. Local repertoire music that comes from and remains popular in particular markets is growing in importance. In Japan, all of top 10 albums of 2012 have been local repertoire. In Italy, eight out of 10. In the UK, Germany, and Spain, seven. And in France, six out of 10. Therefore, we have increased our focus and investment in local repertoire significantly. Developing newcomers like the critically acclaimed Tom O'Dell in the UK or Italian Breakthrough Artist of the Year, Fedez. Sony Music International is also home to superstars such as Celine Dion and Leonard Cohen from Canada, One Direction and Calvin Harris from the UK, French contender for Album of the Year, Maitre Gims, German artist of the decade, Andrea Berg, China's biggest selling artist, Jay Chow, and highly successful J-pop artist Kana Nishino from Japan, and from our Latin company, amongst many others, Shakira and Ricky Martin. Our catalog includes iconic artists such as Sade, Dido, The Eurythmics, Julio Iglesias, Lucio Dalla, Mark Antony, and Udo Jürgens. Sony Music International is organized into nine global regions. However, given the different market dynamics, we further differentiate these uh, regions into three categories. One, mature. Two, streaming growth. And three, emerging growth. We have developed the following strategies that apply to all of these markets. Maximize exploitation of our superstars. Break artists globally. Be number one in local artist breakthrough. And gain profitable market share. Let's begin with the material markets, which represent the biggest revenue generator for international. In Japan, the second largest music market behind the US, Sony Music is the clear market leader. Other key international territories include the UK, Germany, France, Australia, and Canada. In these markets, our strategy is to drive growth through our strength in artist development, supported by strategic acquisitions, such as the French label YTB, home of superstar group Section Dassault. Streaming growth markets are markets where digital sales have surpassed physical. The streaming-centric markets include Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, Belgium, and the Netherlands. In these markets, we've widened our repertoire base through strategic acquisitions, such as the highly successful Nordics labels Disco Wax and Family Tree, and we've expanded our distributed labels business. We also focus on artist development in streaming markets, um, as illustrated by the fact that we doubled our investment into artists and repertoire in Sweden in the last five years. Artists like the multi-platinum selling Swedish band Mando Diao or Norwegian superstar Björn Eitzvag were also signed by us. Our strategy for these markets further involves gaining market share through maximization of repertoire in streaming services through curation and playlists. Some of our biggest opportunities for growth long-term, both as a company and as an industry, reside in the emerging markets, where paid music consumption is currently low, yet possibilities for um, music for future monetization is massive. Turning first to the Latin region, we see growing economies led by two major territories, Brazil and Mexico, which rank eighth and 15th largest within the worldwide music markets. As music revenues per capita are far below European average, there's a high potential growth factor. Brazil will soon be receiving world attention from hosting the FIFA 2014 World Cup and the 2016 Summer Olympics. 
for the world. And for the World Cup, Sony Music will again provide the official song and anthem. And further, we will be launching the first global music talent discovery competition through the World Cup Super Song Contest, which is an important one Sony initiative. Our Mexican operation is leading the way in exploiting opportunities in the live business through our concert company Westwood, as well as in brand, brand partnerships and uh, 360 deals. As we plan to strengthen our number one position throughout the entire Latin region, we have an added focus on digital growth initiatives. Additionally, we plan to expand into new countries where, the, where there is a growing demand for music. In the Asia region, our focus is on the emerging markets of India and China. Given the significant population size and relatively high mobile consumer base in these markets, minimal music revenues per capita and a steadily growing GDP, we see huge potential for growth. We aim to grow market share in Asia by investing into local repertoire, focusing on digital and seeking investment opportunities. An initiative that we have taken recently in India was to partner with Sony Mobile in creating a customized Sony Music app. It was a very successful one Sony initiative. Also in India, which reported an impressive 22% growth in their music market last year, we're investing in the popular Bollywood soundtracks format to help strengthen our number one position in India amongst Western majors. In China, we're currently working with mobile network operators and industry associations to further develop the legal digital market. Chinese music market ranks number 20 in the world, whereas Chinese movie business is the second largest in the world. This illustrates the potential. We're also working with strategic partners to develop the life and touring business in China as well. Turning now finally to Africa, the African continent has a population in excess of 1 billion with a number of countries showing economic growth. For now, the biggest African market is South Africa, which ranks number 22 in the world. Historically, the markets in Africa have been dominated by piracy. However, with high mobile penetration and an increased demand for legal services, we feel there are vast growth opportunities. We're currently taking steps to facilitate our digital growth by securing pan-African digital deals with mobile providers and by launching new digital services. We're also in the process of widening our repertoire base by signing local talent for digital distribution throughout Africa. Furthermore, we recently bought Afrikaans label Select Music, consistent with our strategy of gaining a foothold in the most promising countries in the region. In our effort to further grow the business, it is our goal to be the number one company in emerging markets overall. In summary, our key strategies for our international operations are to secure global and local artist breakthrough, continue to grow profitable market share, go for the number one position in emerging growth markets, grow the top line, and continue to grow profits and improve margins. <laughs>